Hi there, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV, and I'd like to thank the Coquitlam Library for donating their space today, as well as the territories that we sit on with the Coquitlam First Nations peoples. My guest today is an amazing author, Brian Antonson, along with his uh, brother Rick and Mary Trainer, that have written this great book here called Slumax Gold. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Lovely to see you today. What an amazing, amazing cover that this is. And uh, I can't fi wait to find out more about the book itself, but we're gonna start off with, what inspired you to write about this? Nine years old, 1957, wow. I'm uh, sitting around a campfire with my brother. We tell this story in the book. Yes. Uh, at uh, summer camp, and this gal is, she was old at the time. She must have been at least 50. Oh, I was going to say 30? But the little, little nine-year-old Yeah, you're nine, guys. exactly. And uh, we're listening to these ghost stories, and then she talks about this legend about a guy who brought gold nuggets into New Westminster, who took uh, native girls off into the woods with him to hunt his gold, to dig it out. They never came back alive. And then when he was finally hanged, he put a curse on the mine. And that, I mean, for a nine-year-old kid, it's, whoa, this is summer camp. What's course, happening here in course. the darkness of night and yes. so on? So from that point on, we have been absolutely uh, besotted with this whole legend. We then, as we grew older, we, when we were kids, we said, well, we're going to grow up and go find that mine. Mm -hmm. As we grew older, we thought, mm, probably not going to find it, but what if we write a book about it? And we did that in 1972. We sold 10,000 copies. A bestseller in Canada is uh, 5,000, so wow. Uh, that was uh, huge. We ultimately sold our publishing company uh, that came from that off to another company, Heritage House, which has published this yes, book. Yes, exactly. Uh, we talked with them in 2007, the 35th anniversary of the whole thing, and uh, they said they'd like another version. So we did an updated 160-page um, version, which has now sold almost 15,000. And then as we came into these, into the 20s, uh, they wanted another one, as did we. And so that's what you see here on camera. Uh, it's now 224 pages. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a real coffee table book, 8 yes, by 10. it's beautiful. Full of wonderful pictures, stunning yes. uh, pictures. And, yes, beautiful And pictures. just everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the quick and dirty on it. Give us a brief overview of uh, why this is so captivating. Everybody loves a gold story. Everybody li loves the, the concept of a, of a lost mine. Everybody really loves a lost mine concept with a curse on it. Mm -hmm. And this has got all of those elements. And it's local. It, it all happened uh, just a, a few in, miles in away Lake, from, right? yeah, yes. from a few miles away from where we're sitting right this very mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people can go and visit some of the sites associated with Slumac. Uh, they can visit his grave site if they wish. Uh, they can be very, very involved in, in, in the whole legend. So it's, uh, it's captivating. And it, it's, we've had people, thousands of people, hunting for this mine for years, and nobody's found it in over 130 years. So it's compelling. Well, backtrack just for a moment. Tell me about the dynamics between yourself, your brother, and Mary. Uh, dynamics? Yes. Hmm. Oh, that would be an interesting thing. Uh, Rick and Mary met after Mary and I had, had been uh, at school together, broadcast school. And uh, she put the names together and so on. And so the three of us and our, our, our spouses got together at one point in time and we talked about the concept of a book and decided that the three of us would do the research and so on. So we've been friends now for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, publishing in the early 70s for the first book and it's been a, a grand time. Uh, Mary keeps Rick and me honest. Uh, she's the uh, the realist in the whole thing. Uh, and, you need and someone like that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and she's great to work with and uh, Rick and I are a long time, he's a year younger than me so we're uh, long time uh, buds as well as being brothers and uh, so we've done a lot of things over the years together. So the three of us get along like a house on fire and we have a really good time and working on a book together, and this is what the fourth one that we've done together, 
uh, is always a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And do you do it from your remote locations? Do you guys get together? Do you hash stuff out? How does that work? When they lived in the Lower Mainland, and certainly back in the uh, in the days of Canary Yellow Paper that was you right. know, typing yes. and, and yes. typing yes. copies yes. with carbon paper and so on, uh, we met frequently. They're now both in the interior, right. and so it's all done remotely. The odd time, we have uh, Zoom calls. And we're on the phone frequently and, and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's worked out very, very well. Um, this time, all remote. The last time, mm, each of us in our homes, even though we were all on the Lower Mainland, uh, but the dy dynamic has been just fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, there's so much more technology than, than there and was. And it's so and much easier to do it. Google sharing groups and things like that. Yeah, and, all those yeah, things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in terms of, um, did you think that at, at some point in your life you were going to be an author? Is this something that you had always wanted to do and aspire to be? No. Yeah, uh, my brother yeah. would say yes. Uh, I tell people I'm an accidental author. This was Rick's idea back it's better in, than being in, uh, an accidental child. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> back in 1970, Rick said, well, what do you think? You know, I, I, maybe we could do some research on this and, and put it together. And I said, yeah, OK. I find writing to be very easy. I um, give me something to write. It'll come out uh, very, very quickly from my wow. fingertips. Mm -hmm. And so I jumped into it. Mary jumped into it. And so the three of us work very, very well together. But no, I did not think that I, I was a radio guy from the time I was 14. I wanted to be mm -hmm. in radio. I accomplished uh, everything that I wanted to uh, in the broadcast world and uh, really, really enjoyed it. But this was a, a much fun um, sideline, I guess mm -hmm. you'd call it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and just curious, just, just curious what, what does Rick do? Rick was for uh, yeah for yes. many many years. Rick was the CEO of Tourism Vancouver. Okay. Uh, so he did all sorts of things that have had not, a not huge impact. Not an English impact. lit major no, or anything no, like no, that. No, 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 a no. teacher somewhere, no, no. a professor. But uh, as, as CEO, he was part of a team that uh, uh, I would say that he was the leader of the team. But he would say, no, no, no I was just part of the, the group that brought the 2010 Olympics to Vancouver. Oh, amazing. The idea started in his office, uh, office between uh, a discussion between him and his vice president. Uh, and he gives the credit away to other people. But Rick, um, he's written several books on his own, uh, very successful travel uh, narratives. Uh, I can, if I can tell a brief story about one of them. Sure, when yeah. we were kids, every time we were at a family do and one of our uncles or somebody left to go to the bathroom or go to the store or whatever, we'd say, where are you going? And they'd say, I'm going to Timbuktu for a haircut. That line stuck with us. And at some point in time, Rick was pondering what he was going to do with a month off. And, uh, and his wife said to him, why don't you go to Timbuktu for a haircut? And he said, as soon as I find out where it is, I'm going. Yeah. And he did. And that was the first of his, uh, I think, five uh, travel narratives now. Very good books all. Yeah, that's great. You know what? I, I, it's all coming back to me. You, you mentioned 2010 Olympics. I remember the name. I have to say, I do. Yeah. It's all. I'm having these aha moments as you're as you're speaking. Um, why do you think that this book stands out versus other books? Uh, I, I, we tell the truth. I think uh, there was a, a, a criticism that somebody uh, labeled about the, the whole aura about uh, the Slumac legend. Uh, this was just a few weeks ago. Uh, popped up on a, a, a site called Skeptoid.com. Oh, okay. And I thought to myself, I, I started reading it. He said, you know, all these books and all these different things and so on. You know, it's, it's not right. And then he I thought he was going to take a run at us. And then he said, if you want the real truth, you should go to the Antonson Trainer Antonson book, Slumax Gold. Well, that was a heck of an endorsement. Wow. And um, it was, was a very, very solid thing. Mm. And I think that's an important thing. We tell the truth. Uh, and uh, with all deference to all of the other authors who have been involved, uh, they do focus on the legend. And there is the legend and there's the truth uh, as to what happened. And over the years, many of them have, have uh, spoken of the truth as well. Uh, but I think that's an advantage to us is uh, right from the get-go, we tell the truth. Right. What are some of the challenges that you faced in writing the book? 
Well, time is always a challenge. Even though you're retired, uh, you're very, very busy. Yeah, what are you and, guys busy uh, doing? <laughs> well, we've been traveling. Grandchildren, yeah, travel, all, those things. all the things. Uh, and, and just uh, life in general. I, uh, I've been retired now for 14 years, and people say, well, it must be kind of boring. And I say, I have yet to be bored in all the years that I've uh, been retired. Mm -hmm. I've been busy with a number of different things. And, uh, and this is a labor of love and uh, for all of us. And uh, it, it's our baby. I picked this up literally this morning from the publisher, the first copy, and I sent uh, a picture of a few of the, the pages and so on to my colleagues. They've not seen it yet. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one who's touched I know. Touched I, it. I didn't think we were going to see a copy today. <laughs> Nor did I, just, but just I asked with the, with the media package, and I thought, oh, I really hope he brings a book. Is there yeah, going to yeah. be that opportunity? I brought, but I brought our older book along just in case. But uh, I said, uh, I sent it to them, and I said, uh, here's some baby pictures <laughs> of our baby. Yes, yes, that's lovely. Um, I, I think that all of the, my next questions about what was your favorite part about writing, and I can just sort of see it in your expressions and your passion, that there is probably a lot of favorite things that you yeah. loved writing about. So are, are there a couple that stick out to you? Uh, there's so many that would stick out to mm -hmm. me. I, I, love the, I love the chase. Uh, you get involved in, uh, in researching something, and you look and you look and you look and all of a sudden you get that aha moment and, uh, and, and, and it all starts to fall into place. So I like that, but, but there's too many to, to choose one. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you one experience that I had, uh, not with this book, but with the uh, 2007 book. Uh, we were on deadline. There's always a deadline. We had to have this in the next morning. And so one night we're trying to tie up all the loose ends and Mary would fire me a note from her place in Burnaby at the time. And she'd say, Bri, I need a paragraph on da 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 Okay, stand by. I'd write the paragraph, fire it to her and Rick. They'd both say, yeah, that's, that, that's great. And then I'd say, okay, now I think we should have a paragraph about. And that sort of thing, the immediacy, uh, you can almost, it's palpable. Uh, when you do that and uh, so we uh, all three of us have had that experience of mm -hmm. deadlines and uh, and real excitement as you unearth new material talking to somebody on an interview and all of a sudden they drop a little bon mot off to the side and you say whoa there's something you know so but there's just many many of those that's amazing what uh where can people find this uh, this book? Well, right now it's available on pre-order on Amazon, and we understand it's on various different uh, Black Bond and, and uh, uh, Indigo and, and folks like that. Actual publication date is October the 29th, mm -hmm. and by that po uh, point, and it's just arrived here last week in the warehouse. Right. Uh, so after that date, it should be in bookstores. Um, everywhere. So some people are already pre-ordering it on Amazon, and they have their confirmation that That's you know great. it's yeah. it's ordered, mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be ready to go, and they'll receive it on the 29th or shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Bond is doing us a wonderful favor. Uh, they did this last uh, time with our Whistle Posts West book, a, a book of train stories. Mm -hmm. uh, they did this. There, uh, they've got a delivery van that goes all over Vancouver to their stores and so on, all over the Vancouver area, and delivers their books. And both sides will have this right across this cover, right across the and side. And do all of you get together and do any book signings at these different locations? Uh, have you done that. We will do that. We have. Uh, it's difficult to get the three of us together these mm -hmm. days. Uh, we've done that a number of times. The very first book signing that we did in 2007. We were in a Coles Notes book store in Abbotsford, 78 books sold in two hours. It was just bingo, bango, bongo. We did uh, one day where we, uh, Costco had a stack of 164 in each store. We started in Abbotsford, we moved to uh, midday, we moved to Langley, and late in the afternoon uh, we were in, um, in Burnaby. We sold 164 books in each store mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Coquitlam Center, well, uh, the, the, the Indig or Chapters bookstores right. at the time, right. had uh, a contest between all the Chapters bookstores to see who could sell the most. And the Coquitlam Center uh, uh, Chapters uh, was the one that sold that one. almost 1,200 books wow. uh, in a couple of months and so on. So that, again, that, that energizes us because we know that people are enthusiastic about the book and about selling it. How long did it take you to write this edition? Well, we waited until we had a contract with Heritage House, and I want to say that was the fall of 22. 
of 2022 that we had a contract and then we started to work on it and we spent so much of 2023 and into 2024 doing all the uh, interviews, securing all the photographs, uh, getting the maps done, uh, excellent map work uh, by a, a guy named Eric Leinberger who does phenomenal work. Uh, and so all of that and securing permissions and uses and all that sort of stuff uh, took a long time. And then the editing process, our editor who worked with us on our other books, Carla Decker, wonderful woman, came out of semi-retirement uh, to do the editing. And what we love about Carla, and again, this is all long distance, mm -hmm. what we love about Carla is that she says, I don't understand that. And if I don't understand it, your reader's not going to understand it. Explain it better to me. Thank you, Carla. We'll do a better job. And that's wonderful to have somebody who, who does that work, who is insistent and, and, and has a, a very high bar. Uh, and, and she was wonderful to work with. That's fantastic. What, um, what other things should we know about the book and why should uh, people watching buy it? I've, I've had the, the proof copy here for uh, quite a while, but it's not like holding a book in your hand. Exactly. So when I got home from picking it up today, a bunch of things to do, and I finally sat down in the corner in this wonderful, comfortable chair, and I just opened everything, mm -hmm. and I went through it as a reader would do it. I think that the visuals that are inside here, the text, the way it's laid yeah, out, you while may. You're speaking, go ahead. Uh, the the whole thing is so well done, and this is a combination effort. This is us as writers, but also uh, the production people, the the designers, and the editing, and so on. Just wonderful things uh, that have happened. Um, I, I think somebody's going to look at that in a, a bookstore mm -hmm. and they're going to say, wait a minute, how do I get to the cash register? Right. Because they're going to love it uh, so much. Do you pick the retail price on it or does your no, publisher? No, that, that, that's a publisher. That's a publisher. Can I show yes. one specific uh, picture? Do. Yeah, I, I, did, I did see all these amazing photos in the, uh, yeah. in the media yeah. guide. There's a, an, a, there's a lot of legend and a lot of mistruths. And a writer by the name of C.V. Tench turned this from mm, uh, a search for gold into a scurrilous thing. He introduced the whole bit about women being taken off to the bush, never coming back, all the lies, all it, it's just uh, not true. And he painted uh, Slumac as a young rogue. There's a picture that he used uh, as, uh, uh, with various names, various stories. And there's Slumac, and he's got this jaunty hat on, and he's got a stogie in his mouth, and, and so on. And, and this was his way of saying he was a young rogue. That is what the real Slumac, if I can hold this up for the camera. The real one? Sorry, that, that, that's, that's what the real Slumac would have looked like. Yes. This is from a, a, a film done in, in 1994 by a, a local uh, Port Coquitlam guy, mm -hmm. originally Michael Collier, who did a wonderful film, and they told the truth. And they said, this is what this 80-year-old man looked like. And the truth is that uh, Slumac had a bad blood situation between him and another fellow named Louis B., and in an altercation between the two of them, Slumac shot Louis B. Uh, and killed him and ran off into the bush and they hunted him down for two months and he finally was flushed out of the bush, stood trial for the murder of Louis B., was hanged on January the 16th of 1891 and never said a word. He never said a word at the, uh, as he was being led up the, the steps to the scaffold. Mm -hmm. He never uttered a curse. So that's all legend. That's all false. That's all, as we would call it today, fake news. Exactly. But that's the real image of the guy. Not some young rapscallion, but a, 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 an elderly man who made a bad mistake. We might have some uh, young authors uh, miss our viewers and everything. Any advice that you could give to people that wanted to start their own book one day? When I was in grade 12, we had an assignment from Miss Wiley, Roberta Wiley. I love how you remember, Burnaby, so. you remember so many oh, things. I love that. The way you name drop, and it's not even intrusive. It's like, for anyone yeah. listen, who is this CV person? <laughs> you, okay, Miss Wiley, is that her name? Miss Wiley. Okay. She was uh, teaching us English, and she gave us an assignment uh, to write a descriptive paragraph. Hmm. 
And she uh, sent mine back to me with a, a writing on it that said, the next time I assign a descriptive paragraph, please find something else to do because you are obviously the master of the descriptive paragraph. All of a sudden, grade 12, I thought, I can write. I, somebody actually told, a teacher actually told me that I can write something. Uh, and so I have been writing one way or another uh, ever since. I can't tell you how many reports I've done, mm -hmm. academic things, mm -hmm. commercials in radio, all those different things that I've done over the years because I was given the confidence from her that I could actually write. Uh, so what I would do is give that same advice to younger people who think they might like to do it. Just do it. You know, the, yeah. the, the old Nike thing. Just do it. Sit down and write. Nobody has to see it, but just keep on practicing and practicing. You will get better. Do your research. Report honestly on whatever it is. I've taught journalism students this for years mm -hmm. at, uh, at BCIT. Honesty, integrity, and all of those ethical uh, sidebars. But just do it. And somewhere along the way, somebody just may say, I like what you do. That's amazing. Today we're listening and um we're listening to Brian Antonson uh, with uh, Slumax Gold right here. Uh, get your copy on October 29th. It's going to be in bookstores near you. And it was a pleasure today to listen to uh, not only uh, In Search of a Legend, but perhaps a curse as well. And you never know, you might have a Miss Wiley teacher in your life. If you're thinking about becoming an author, just do it. I'm Kathy Chenna. Thanks for watching Tri-Cities Community TV.